Brothers and sisters, we're going to take a moment today. We're going to look at all three readings. We're also going to look at the words that pertain to today's feast, the exaltation of the Holy Cross. And finally, I'll just wrap it up with a legend of why we celebrate this feast. Okay, what's the story behind it? So let's get going today. Kind of nice that during this long journey of ordinary time now, by June 29th, which fell on Sunday, we honored Saints Peter and Paul. We take a moment again in this long journey of ordinary time and we get to celebrate another feast. Now this one is the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Some places you'll see the triumph of the cross. Okay, and remember, today celebrates the exaltation of the cross. Tomorrow celebrates another feast. It pertains to Mary. We think about Mary and the feast, oftentimes we think about stories of joy, annunciation, visitation, think about presentation, Our Lady of the Rosary, Assumption, Coronation, Our Lady of the Rosary, all of these things. But tomorrow is actually the story of Our Lady of Sorrow. Okay, so we have to understand today with tomorrow. Okay, Our Lady of Sorrows, with Mary, we sit at the foot of the cross, and we realize just how graphic the story really is, how violent it was that Jesus Christ had to suffer and die. First reading, Bill, you proclaimed it today. Remember the people complained. And remember, because of the original sin, one of the things that we've learned is this, animals became wild. All of a sudden, serpents started snipping at us, and because of that, we died. So what happened? The people grumbled. They didn't like where they were. So what happened? They come across seraphs, and all of a sudden they're bitten and they start dying. So what do they do? They fashion this bronze serpent. People have been bitten, look at it. What do they do? They're healed. That's physical illness. Today honors a cross. Jesus Christ is raised up on a cross, and we talk here about spiritual healing. Okay, power of the first reading of today. And because of, you know, the idea of what this is really all about, we can answer the question why Good Friday is really good. You know, why we don't call it Crucifixion Friday. Or Sad Friday. We call it good. Because John 3.16 answers, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him may not die, but may have eternal life. God gave us everything, people. He gave us his son, and the son gave us everything. He gave us his life. That's what the second reading today says. God, remember, was in heaven, didn't exalt himself, humbled himself, took the form of a slave, suffered and died. And because of that, what will happen at some point? Every knee will bend, and every tongue will confess before him that he is Jesus Christ, the Lord. He is. Here's something maybe you've never thought about, though. Why do we have John 3.16? Why do we have that very passage? Do you really know what happens in the third chapter of John's Gospel? That Jesus would have to make such a proclamation. Probably don't. But let me just take you through it real quickly. Third chapter of John is, is a conversation between a man named Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews, and Jesus. Okay, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at all times at night, which tells us something he didn't want to be seen. Okay, but he does come. And Nicodemus comes to Jesus, and the third chapter begins with Nicodemus complimenting Jesus in these words. Rabbi, Jesus. We know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs you are doing unless God is with him. That's quite a compliment. How many times do you ever hear a Pharisee, a leader of the Jewish people, compliment Jesus and mean it without something being inferred behind it? Not here. It's a compliment. Okay? Jesus answers, now listen to this. No one, okay, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus is now confused. Okay, and he actually asked Jesus, how can we be born again? Am I to go back into my mother's womb and be born again? It's not what Jesus means. John 3, 5 says this. Okay? No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water 
and the Holy Spirit. People, this is, has nothing to do with us going back into our mother's wombs. Okay? What this points to is the power of baptism. And for any one of us who's been baptized, we understand the power of baptismal water and how it changes our life. We're going to come back to this in the beginning. But it goes on, and John 3.16 tells us about the power of baptismal water. It is about giving and believing. Listen to it again. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him may not die, but may have eternal life. John 3 is really about baptism, okay? And Jesus clarifies what baptism is about and what it points us to. More on that here in a moment, the power of baptism. Okay, now that we've kind of looked at the readings, let's look at the phrase. The exaltation of the Holy Cross, what does it mean to exalt? Exalt means to proclaim boldly, okay, boldly, loudly. I want you to think back on Ash Wednesday. Remember when you walked out of this church, you had ashes on your forehead? Do you remember what they said and what they meant? You didn't even have to speak. You didn't have to say anything. The ashes spoke for you. What did they say boldly, loudly? They said this. I am from dust, and because of dust, my sin, I am going to return to dust. But despite my sin, through the cross of Jesus Christ, I will be saved. That's what it means to exalt. Proclaim loudly, boldly. Okay? Exaltation of the holy cross. Okay, holy means to move beyond ourselves. Okay, to look at something else that is far greater than me. Let's go back to that baptism story now, and let's go back to what we do when we come into church. Okay, we come into church, and what do we do? We take our fingers, and we put them in what? Holy water, and we sign ourselves, right? Okay? What are we doing? Take you through it. One, take the holy water, sign ourselves, and we're basically saying, I believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Girl, isn't that what we say? In the name of the Father, and of the, and of the Holy Spirit. There you got it. Okay, I believe. Second thing, I believe in the cross. Okay, you're all. We make the sign of the cross. Third thing that we say is this. I believe in the power of baptism. Because what does that holy water point to when we were what? Baptized. And when we were baptized, what was poured over our head? It was water. And the words were said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay? If you don't believe in any of that, don't do this. If you don't believe in any of that, don't come in. Don't lie. Put your fingers in holy water and sign yourself. If you don't believe in any of that, don't do it. It's a lie. But what it really does, everyone, remember, talk about proclaiming boldly. There it is. It moves us beyond ourselves to a life of Trinitarian belief. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's a trinity in which I believe and which I am willing to give my life. There's John 3.16. Believe and give. Okay, finally, why are we celebrating this feast? Here's a little story behind it. Constantine, back in the 4th century, everyone, when he finally was able to overtake and he, he finally was able to rule the Roman Empire, went with his mother one day and she, they traveled throughout the story of Israel and kind of took, following the footsteps of Jesus, went to many of his holy places. As a matter of fact, it was Constantine who actually built a church in Bethlehem. It was Constantine who actually had a church built on the Mount of Olives. The most famous church, though, is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now that means, everyone, the tomb of Jesus. Okay? Fourteenth station is this. Jesus is laid in the sepulchre. It's in his tomb. Story goes that as they were building this church, they came across three crosses. Now when you think about the story of Jesus' death, we think about how many crosses, we think about three. 
Jesus, good thief, bad thief. Story goes that they didn't know which one was the cross of Jesus. So there was a woman there who was dying. Okay? And they took each of the crosses, and they took it and they bumped it up against the woman. The story goes when the third cross touched the woman, she was completely healed. And because of that legend, everyone, which actually took place around the year of 320, we now have this feast, a feast that honors the true cross of Jesus Christ. That's why we celebrate this today. Okay? And there you have it, everyone. There's the story of what we are gathering to do. We simply realize this today, everyone. The cross is our means of salvation and through which we are receive grace, the gift of life. So if we really believe in the cross, if we really believe in Trinitarian faith and the power of baptism, let's conclude today with our sign of the cross, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs>